Playing Warzone this year is more challenging than ever, because the entire mechanical set of how Warzone has functioned has completely shifted from Warzone 2 into this new variant of Warzone. And with that shift comes new challenges, changes that are causing frustration, and things that generally people aren't nailing down. It's causing a lot of losses and a lot of frustration, and it's taken a lot of time for me to understand the ins and outs of what makes you successful in Warzone 3. So if you're trying to beat off men in Warzone and win every single game possible, this is the way to do it. This is information that I've gathered that's given me the most success that I've found in Warzone and things that are just really important to know. And some of these are things that even the best players aren't talking about yet, which hopefully should give you an insight into how much has changed and just how impactful it is. If you are struggling in Warzone, you're definitely not alone, and everything in this video is going to give you the kind of insight that most other people would probably pay for in terms of coaching. If you find this video helpful or interesting, drop a like, subscribe, we're on the road to 150k, and make sure to check out the link in the description below for custom controllers that will improve your game in Warzone. I use one of these bad boys myself, and I would highly recommend them. My first piece of advice is something that even the pros aren't talking about yet, and that is the revised damage models within Warzone. Because for the first time in a long time, it actually is very rewarding to know the weapon you're using and how you should be using it effectively. I've had so many gunfights now, both in terms of the gulag and in the game, where I'm wondering how I've lost the fight. And the reality is, is that the weapon pool for Warzone and how the weapons produce damage has been completely overhauled. Now this was mentioned in the patch notes when Warzone released that the damage models had been flattened, meaning that the numbers had been condensed. The idea behind this is to make the TTK feel more consistent. Being shot in the arm now will basically be the equivalent of being shot in the chest or stomach, and for a lot of weapons, being shot in the head is actually really low now. For example, with the MCW, if you hit somebody in the chest, it's 26 damage, but if you hit somebody in the head, it's only 31 damage, which is not a huge multiplier when you're considering that this is an assault rifle. And this is where understanding the weapons you are using is incredibly useful, because there is a lot of snake oil on the internet, not only from content creators on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok, but just generally, people aren't very honest with how much research they've done into a weapon, they'll tell you that something shreds, but they won't tell you why it shreds, or what makes that weapon special. For example, lots of people are going for the Striker 45 right now, but the reason the Striker 45 is good is not because it's a weapon that's particularly powerful, although it boasts a decent TTK, it's because the Striker 45 has one of the highest headshot multipliers in the game, meaning that if you land a single bullet to the head with a Striker 45, chances are you're going to win that gunfight. And this is why I personally recommend the Striker 45 over the WSP Swarm if you're somebody who's an accurate player. The WSP Swarm gives you 27 damage to the chest and 29 to the head because it has a fast rate of fire, so having a headshot multiplier that's really high would break the weapon. But if you use the Striker 45, the damage to the chest is 39, but the damage to the head is 46. Now yes, it fires slower, but that's a substantial increase over the WSP Swarm, meaning that more accurate players can achieve higher damage outputs using a Striker 45 over a WSP Swarm. And there are more examples of this all throughout Warzone. If you look at the Assault Rifle category, like I mentioned, the MCW only offers 31 damage to the head and 26 to the chest. But the Ram 7 offers 46 to the head and neck and 36 to the chest, which is a huge jump. Now yes, the Ram 7 does of course have a better TTK than the MCW, just generally speaking. But it's information like this that can win or lose you a gunfight. If you don't know that the MCW has basically no headshot multiplier and you try shooting people in the head, you're going to be asking questions, why am I losing this gunfight? What am I doing wrong? Whereas somebody with a Ram 7 is just going to be straight up deleting you if they hit you in the head, and there are very obvious reasons why. And there are lots of discrepancies like this all over the various different weapon categories, and it's why certain weapons are performing better than others, and if you don't know this information, you should familiarize yourself with it. Now yes, it's not something you need to know for every single gun. You don't need to know the full damage profiles of 60-70 weapons in the game. But at the bare minimum, understanding how your loadout weapons that you intend on taking into the game work will allow you to play more cohesively with those weapons and produce better results. I on stream today switched from a WSP Swarm to a Striker 45, because I know I'm a more accurate player naturally, and my outcome was winning a lot more gunfights that I shouldn't have lost, just like this one. The next thing is also something I'm not seeing enough conversation about between pro players and also the internet, 
And that is the new utilities, because the new utilities in Warzone are extremely powerful, and also pretty much every utility in the game explosive-wise received a buff in the last update. There are two new utilities in particular, which are exceedingly powerful, very useful, and are really helpful in the game. And I'm referring to the Thermobaric Grenade and the Breacher Drone. These are two new types of utilities that we've never seen before that serve multi-purposes in ways that allow you to attack objectives and attack players in ways that you haven't been able to before. The Thermobaric Grenade, for example, deals more damage to an opponent in terms of explosives and the thermite that it leaves afterwards if they get hit by the initial explosive grenade. And not only that, the explosion itself deals damage and it leaves fire on the floor dealing excess damage, allowing it to be not only a weapon that you can use for breaching and entering, but also something you can use for area denial if you're trying to pull off a res or get out of a sticky situation. Likewise, the Breach Drone is the first of its kind that has seemingly one of the longest ranges of any lethal we've seen in Call of Duty and allows you to land a nade entirely accurately as long as you have a sightline to where you want it to go. Meaning that you can set up plays 10 to 15 seconds before you've even made the push. You can let go of a breacher drone and use that to cover a window or cover an entrance or take out a certain player whilst pushing from a different angle. This is the first time we've seen a utility be multi-versatile in a way that it helps you with pushes from more than one direction. Normally, you lob a grenade in, you wait for it to explode, and then you kind of rush in. With this, you can pre-send the nades in if you're far enough away, and then attack from a different angle. You can overwhelm opponents in buildings, and you can land an explosive at an exact location with 100% accuracy so long as you can visibly see where you want it to go. My next thing that I want to talk about is something that I think has been somewhat overhyped and not actually all that useful. There have been a lot of perks that have been added to the game, like Stalker, Irradiated, things like Flex as well, and some of them are pretty useful. Flex, I think, offers a really decent audio experience to those who don't have the ability to tune their audio a little bit more, and it also stops things like Claymores from completely deleting you. But some of them aren't actually that good. Irradiated isn't that good. Resolute isn't that good. And these perks have almost been a bit of a red herring in my opinion. And you also have perks in there like, for example, Tempered, which you actually end up getting if you just find a Tempered Vest. Or Ghost, which you can find using a Ghost Vest. These are things that you shouldn't be taking into Warzone because you can literally get them as ground loot. So I'm seeing lots of people taking things like Stalker, taking things like Resolute, taking things like Irradiated, but those aren't actually all that useful. The reality is, is that if you're caught out in the open, Resolute isn't gonna save you with a five to 10% increase in movement. You're still gonna die. A poor gas play is still a poor gas play, and sure, Irradiated might keep you alive for a fraction of a second longer, but the reality is, is that, again, it probably isn't going to save you. And this is detracted away from perks that are actually very good, and things that pretty much everybody, in my opinion, should be using. Take Mountaineering, for example. Mountaineering sounds like a really stupid perk and it doesn't sound all that useful, but this thing nearly doubles to triples the amount of fall damage you can take. You can actually jump from the top of a radio tower and effectively survive. It's about 46 meters worth of damage that you can survive from a fall, meaning that you can jump off of a three-story, two-story building and guarantee yourself safety without ever splatting meaning that you could escape from situations and attack situations more aggressively than you ever could before if you're somebody who utilizes a lot of verticality. This is a perk that's actually surprisingly very useful, especially for players who play Resurgence. Vondor is mostly two to three story, maybe even four story buildings, and pretty much all of them are survivable with the mountaineering perk if you just drop onto the floor, which isn't the case if you don't have the perk. This thing is basically designed for Vondal, and nobody's really using it. Likewise, Quick Fix. Health regeneration in Warzone 3.0, or just Warzone as they like to call it now, because apparently branding is a headache, is pretty low. It's actually fairly slow, and if you play up, it doesn't really save you a huge amount. But Quick Fix activates health regen as soon as you put a single plate in, and it gives you a much faster regeneration of health, a much faster ability to re-engage with somebody, and right now I would argue is a vital perk to have on any given occasion. If you find a tempered vest and use quick fix, a single plate is going to give you half of your armor and also instantly regen your health. And quick fix and a tempered vest are one of the few examples where combining two perks together, both in terms of a vest format and taking one into your loadout, 
can effectively give you a super soldier technique. This is something that's going to let you attack people more often, recover from fights quicker, and be able to reset and re-engage different fights that you've lost the initiative in faster than ever before. I'd argue right now that if you're not taking quick fix, you're making a major mistake. Hell, even perks like high alert right now, whether you're a solos, trios, or quads player, are actually insanely good, and people just forgot about them because some new shiny keys got jangled in their face. And my final tip is something that's a little self-explanatory and not something that I would consider necessarily top level insight into Warzone, but something I'm seeing fail people time and time again. And that's that Warzone rounds are shorter now, zones come in way quicker, and I'm seeing way too many players not rotating early enough. I'm seeing even good players, some of the best that I know, get caught on the edge of the gas more than they should be. This is something that is stifling everybody in Warzone because they've not mentally adjust that Warzone's lost about 30 to 40% of its actual playtime. And once you kind of think about that a bit more and realize that it's causing huge crushes of players on the edge of circles and in the gas, you'll realize that the vast majority of games can be won simply by positioning fairly early. So folks, that's about it for this video today. And if you found it useful, leave a like and leave a sub. And I hope it was something that was helpful for your games of Warzone. If there's something you're struggling with, drop it in the comment section because I'm really interested to hear what you guys are dealing with in terms of Warzone. And also, make sure to check out the link in the description below to order one of these custom controllers that I would highly recommend. As always, folks, catch you in the next one, and thank you for watching.